Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Digilog Collection Series. Um, I have this beautiful uh, PowerMax 7300-180 slash that I restored a while ago and it's working perfectly and uh, recently I was thinking would it be nice if I could do some coding on it you know, just directly on the computer. The machine is pretty fast, has a 180 MHz uh, PowerPC processor, about um, uh, 80 megabytes of memory, uh, SCSI hard disk, I can connect it to a, a LCD monitor, so everything is fine. Um, and then I realized that in order to install uh, Metro as Cold Warrior 10, which is what I plan to use as, a, as my de development tools, uh, I don't have enough hard disk space. Um, those machines are supposed to come uh, with about two gigabyte hard disk back in the day, but for some reason mine only came with a one gigabyte hard disk. And, you know, once you have the OS in there and other things, it just there's not enough space to install about 400 megabyte, uh, 400 to 500 megabyte Cold Warrior uh, on it, and also use it for development. So the only solution is to upgrade the hard disk. Um, so well, I'm going to dedicate this episode to doing just that, and then if this works fine and it, it, it behaves properly as I expect it to, it will, and then we'll do the next episode, um, have fun with a bit of coding. So. Uh, like I said, this comes with a SCSI interface, uh, both the hard disk and the uh, CD-ROM drive are, are SCSI and there is the 50-pin uh, 8 SCSI interface. And I was looking around what options do I have to upgrade. Um, in the end I chose, for a, I chose to go for a slightly larger hard disk, which is this uh, Seagate uh, 9GB um, SCSI hard disk that I thought is going to give me more than enough space to do you know, everything I need in the near and, and the long term future of this machine. Um, the problem is that this one comes with a 68-pin uh, in, uh, interface and not the 50-pin 50, 50, 50 one, which is what this machine works with. Um, works with. Uh, however, there is a simple solution. There are those uh, adapters you can get on eBay for like, you know, five to ten dollars that allow you to, to go um, from a 68-pin to a 50-pin uh, normal uh, interface um, and then basically allows you to put uh, a hard disk like this inside the machine uh, that only accepts 50 pin. So, um, you know, we're going to open it up and then we'll see the steps of uh, the procedure that we have to do in order to um, upgrade the, the hard disk and um, set up, uh, transfer data from the old hard disk to the new one, uh, eventually replace the old one out, so we'll just have this one plus the CD-ROM inside. So stay tuned. All right, so I powered off the computer. Um, and first things first, we have to remove the, the case. Uh, but before we do that, the advice I got was to leave the computer plugged in in the back and uh, just, just powered off. This uh, should allow for grounding in case of, you know, we touch any electricity, uh, any, 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 any circuitry that might, we might give it a shock to. So uh, the 7300 um, is actually an um, interesting computer from the point of view of um, dismantling uh, because really all that there is, it has two tabs in the front uh, hidden underneath the edge that you just, when you, when you push up on them, the whole uh, top of the case uh, slides out. It's not like um, the swivel in uh, PowerMax. So pushing on this, there you go, and we remove carefully the case. Let's put this aside. So, um, so here's our old hard disk, the one gigabyte uh, Quantum Empire series uh, floppy drive, the CD-ROM underneath. And um, as it just, this is not um, relevant to what we're doing today, but I actually, um, this was a 166 uh, megahertz um, machine and I got it and I replaced um, uh, the the processor with a 180 uh, megahertz uh, power Mac but uh, anyway so um, this is our, is our hardest so let's let's remove the uh, SCSI data cable from the CD-ROM and the power cable as well and we are going to touch instead of the CD-ROM our new hard disk and after that, we'll boot the system again and set it up. This is just a temporary setup 
such that we can um, you know, copy our, 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 our system files uh, and whatnot from the old one to the new one. Once the new one is being set up, we can just uh, uh, connect, re remove the old one out, put the new one in, and reconnect back the CD-ROM. So for, for a little bit now, we're actually not gonna have a CD drive, uh, but that is fine. So everything seems to be connected in place. So um, let's power it on and see what happens. The computer started fine with the hard disk uh, connected. Uh, the first time I booted though, I had forgotten to switch the uh, hard uh, SCSI ID and uh, macOS um, uh, uh, couldn't find it. So um, I, I said it, I powered it down, I put the jumper to set to um, SCSI ID 4 and it found it. This is the Apple system profiler and it shows a SCSI bus 0, we have two hard disks. Uh, ID0 is our system disk of uh, uh, one gigabyte, and ID4, as I expected, is our new um, Seagate drive of 8.47 uh, gigabytes. So uh, it's not formatted, not set up, uh, but, it, but it exists in the system, and the system recognizes it. So the first thing we do is we initialize the drive, and I have this um, Apple Drive setup tool, um, and I just run that, and that uh, searching for drives connected to this computer and you should find two, uh, the two hard disks, uh, ID uh, 0 and 4, there you go. Uh, Macintosh HD has a volume name, ID 0, ID 4 is our new hard disk, so I select that, it says this disk can be initialized, so we'll just click initialize. Um, initializing will destroy all data on the following volumes, that's fine, uh, we know that. Um, we, we do one partition, that's Mac OS, uh, the whole drive on single partition, uh, let's try it. If this doesn't work, we'll, we can probably separate in um, a few smaller partitions. Uh, but that's it. Now we have uh, this says untitled um, ID4. So let's uh, let's let's check it out. So we should be able to uh, see it. Um, all right. Let's. System profiler, quit. Let's uh, see if the system profiler sees it. We're in the second time. All right, this is system profiler, device and volumes. Number found two. All right, there you go, it has a volume, untitled. Okay, so now we can, now that we have, a, um, a, it's formatted. And um, let's exit uh, drive setup, quit, let's exit utilities. Um, now I should be able to um, copy the disk right here. Uh, we'll basically copy everything from our old hard disk onto the new hard disk. And then we'll make, the, make it bootable and then we'll restart the machine with the old hard disk disconnected so see if we can actually boot from it. So let's do that. All right, so selecting everything. I have some utilities, some games here, that's fine. Uh, I'll just copy them. Put that into copy. Um, this won't be the fastest copy ever because even though those are um, SCSI hardest, they are 8-bit and this is uh, a fairly old computer. So let's see, what does is, what is it think about time remaining? Time remaining... I only had only 360 megabytes as to copy over. About 10 minutes to copy. All right, so we'll come back in uh, 40 minutes. We'll come back in 40 minutes and see where we are. See you then. Okay, so the copy fin... The copy finished and everything is now on the new on the new hardest um, untitled. And the, the, what we want to do is we want the system folder to have this uh, icon. That means um, it's what we call is blessed, uh, and that means that um, the hardest is, is a system has a system partition now. And when you remove the old one and just put the machine with the new one, it should boot just fine. So let's give it a try. All right, so uh, let's shut it down. Um, we'll do this first. Oh no, there you go, shut down. This is the fastest shutdown, by the way, you'll ever see in a computer. 
All right, so then we'll um, disconnect the um, original hard disk. So the machine is not connected, so remove the data cable. There we go. And the power cable is not necessary to remove for this step, but since I expect everything to work, and we, since you have to put the new one back in, I might as well just remove it now. And one extra thing I'm gonna do is now that this is the only hard disk in the system, we want to uh, set back the SCSI ID to zero, which was the SCSI ID of this one. So there's a pin here in the back that sets the uh, ID, so I'm gonna remove that. There's no pin that means ID zero. So what we have at the moment, uh, we don't have the CD-ROM, we don't have the old hard disk. The only thing we have connected in the system on the SCSI bus is the uh, the new hardest so uh, let's give this a try all right there we go it should be booting up uh, let's see if everything is fine we'll watch the monitor we should see a happy mac all right we have a mouse and there you go, Mac OS. Right now the machine is booting from our newly installed hard disk in the back, now from the old one. And since it's, it's larger, it's newer by a few years, uh, it's also faster. So we should see a general speed improvement in the machine, uh, as well as obviously getting a lot more space, about, about nine times more space. All right, so let, let, let's uh, leave it booting. And if everything looks okay, we'll start some, some programs, then, um, <clears throat> We will actually physically remove the old one and, and clean it up and put it all back in and have like a complete job. I'm excited to do some uh, programming on the this old Mac using cold water. Yeah, this is the the date I get up every time I, I start. Not a big deal. Let's uh, dismiss that. All right, that's all hard. It's there you go. I don't have my old uh, shortcuts on the desktop. That's fine. Um, yeah, I have a Vista Pro, actually. Let's see. Um, yeah, it's running. I mean, I can open, I can open dams. Uh, yeah, this is this all looks really good. All right, all right, perfect, 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 perfect. So let's let's shut it down and then do some uh, harder work um, that accompanies software which we, we just did. So first, quit. Do you really want to quit? Yes, I do. Actually, you really want to quit. Special shutdown. Watch the speed of the shutdown. Bam! Shutdown. All right, let's uh, let's take it apart. Okay, so the the way to remove the hardware from this machine is actually is uh, the, the, there's there's a bit of plastic underneath that goes for the uh, along the length of the entire hardware, and you have to put fingers in the front, in the back, pull it up and then slide the hard disk backwards, and that basically moves it off the rail. Um, there you go. So we'll have to now remove this rail um, of this hard disk and mount it on the, on the new one. Come on. All right. Oh, one more. All right. A bit more. All right, so put this inside. Now let's disconnect uh, the cables, the uh, data, and the power. Because remember, the data will have to go back. Uh, the data cable has to go back to the um, CD-ROM drive. Um, so this goes. Uh, let me think. This was like this at the front. That was in the front, that was in the back. I have to figure out to get this uh, right. So I think we want it like, like this. All right, we align the screwdriver holes. And should be able to screw it straight in. Very important to do this with a non-magnetized uh, screwdriver because we are talking about hard disks here and they don't like magnets. All right, so let's 
So where does this, this doesn't want to go in. It doesn't align for some reason. There's always a screw who never who doesn't want to go in. Let's see, it's not aligned. We can put it on the other side. Let's see. Let's see about this. All right, much better. Now should be able. And then I just slot it straight in. That's it. Now it's secure in place. Uh, we need the 68 pin to 50 pin connector uh, going in here. And it's, it's, it doesn't fit. All right, so it doesn't fit because uh, it's too deep and uh, this one is, is the, the, the processor bracket, the bracket uh, that goes around the processor, it's too long and it goes hard, so therefore we can't actually use this. I mean, it, it, it's in, but if I have to put the data cable in, we are basically some, <clears throat> something like, you know, an eighth of an inch uh, too, too long for the space that we have allocated to us. And the power will be fine, but the data is a problem. So we have to come up with a solution about it. So I'll think about it and I'll come right back. Okay, so the solution I came up with finally that allowed me to connect um, the, 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 the 68 pin to 50 pin uh, adapter on the back of the harness is that uh, I moved the entire block uh, that, that holds the, the harness, the floppy and the CD-ROM um, this corner slightly, slightly forward. So I, like I said, I only needed about an eighth to a tenth of an inch and the whole block moved. I connected the cables and moved, pushed everything back and it's, it's not that much um, pushed forward and there is a little, a little bit of leeway in the, in the front of the case when the case slots in so it really shouldn't be uh, much of a problem and it's, 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 it's pretty solid right now. So let's see if we can put the, the, front, uh, <clears throat> the front cover in. Have it right here. It goes reverse to how it went out. So slots down first and then slides in. And you have to make sure everything is aligned. There you go. Click and click and now, now we know it's locked in. And yeah, I, even though we had to move the, the drive lock forward, uh, really actually there is enough space in the front allowed to do that. That's actually interesting, something I didn't know about and it seems to be fine. So um, let's, let's clean it up, put it all back together and give it one last test. All right. So what did we do? Well, we, we took a very nice Power Macintosh uh, 7300 slash 180 and we replaced the original hardware that it came with, which was about one gigabyte uh, SCSI drive with a um, nine gigabyte uh, SCSI 68 pin drive. And then we transferred all the data from the old hard to the new one, and then reconnected everything back in the end. So the machine now is um, uh, uh, fully functional. Uh, everything just as before, except we have a ton more space and a fast, slightly faster drive. Uh, so finally I can go back uh, to my initial plan, which is coding using Code Warrior 10 on the Power Macintosh. Uh, that's something for the next episode. So again, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to Digital Collection and see you next time. <laughs>